I want to talk about a hidden source of heart attacks that you may have never even considered before, but I think it's very, very common, uh, not talked about enough. And since heart disease is the number one killer on planet Earth, it might be a good idea for you to know more about this topic. The unique thing about the heart muscle is that the heart muscle is different than the skeletal muscles. It never has a chance to fully relax and recover. Um, it's constantly beating 24-7, whereas your other muscles can have a chance to relax. They don't have to constantly work, but that heart has to keep working. And when someone dies from a heart attack, it's actually the heart muscle itself that stops contracting and relaxing. It tends to quiver, and then you basically die. And so people don't really die because of, of the artery itself. It's the heart muscle, okay? Now, it's true that you can have a blocked artery that stops the blood flow to the heart muscle, but you die from the heart muscle uh, malfunctioning because of a lack of oxygen. It's called hypoxia or ischemia, which is a lack of blood flow. And as you know, anytime you have a lack of oxygen to a muscle, it cramps, okay? It stops contracting and relaxing. For muscle to work, it needs a lot of oxygen unless you're doing some short sprints, this high intensity uh, type of exercise where you operate with a different system where you don't need oxygen, but that's very short lived and you can only go so far before you hit a wall. Now, when someone gets a heart attack, sometimes I do this test to measure this enzyme, lactate dehydrogenase. I did a video on this, which is an enzyme involving lactate, which I'll get into in a minute. But when this enzyme is in higher amounts, um, it could mean that you just had a heart attack within 24 to 72 hours. But it can also mean other things too, like B12 anemia, as in pernicious anemia. Uh, it could mean that you have AIDS, the kidney, the liver, pancreatitis. It could even indicate that you have cancer because there's destruction of the tissues. And with this destruction comes hypoxia. So hypoxia can also uh, elevate this as well. What's interesting about this topic is I'm going to work backwards and show you how someone could actually get to this situation where uh, they have too much lactic acid in their body. Lactic acid is related to lactate. Too much lactate gives you lactic acid, and now the pH, it goes down, more acidic, and then you run out of air really quick. So where does lactate come from? Well, it comes from this uh, kind of this compound called pyruvate. And pyruvate is kind of a middleman in this chain reaction, and that comes from glucose. So when you burn glucose fuel, it turns into pyruvate, and then lactate, and then eventually lactic acid. Now, another name for glucose is sugar, right? And you probably already know that sugar uh, is not good for the heart. And you may know that when you have elevated glucose, as in a diabetic, um, that glucose can really raise up your triglycerides because they convert to fat. And you might also know that if you're on a high sugar diet, you're going to have high levels of LDL cholesterol. But what you might not know is there's something else that releases a lot of glucose that has nothing to do with your diet, okay? Nothing to do with what you ate. And that is called adrenaline. Maybe you were going to say cortisol and you're correct on that, but adrenaline is also another hormone-like um, communication, potent neurotransmitter that raises your glucose. And adrenaline comes from stress. And the more chronically stressed you are, the more adrenaline you're going to have, the more glucose that your body is going to make or release, which is going to turn into the pyruvate, the lactate, and the lactic acid, and it's going to create hypoxia. There's some fascinating research, and I'll put it the link down below, on this topic on the stress connection to heart attacks because stress creates hypoxia in a big way through adrenaline and cortisol too. So even when someone is, uh, has low blood sugars, adrenaline kicks in there and mobilizes a lot of the glucose in the body to raise the blood sugar. And cortisol does the same thing. But adrenaline is designed for quick energy to, um, if you're chased by a tiger, you have to generate quick energy. And so the body's going to release glucose. But what happens when you're under constant stress over a period of time you're basically, it's like the same thing as eating a lot of sugar. And even though adrenaline creates a vasodilation to the coronary artery, it creates vasoconstriction of the other blood vessels around the body, 
to the point where there's no more vasodilation, there's just vasoconstriction. So this could also explain if someone, I don't know, over-exercises and they're not in good shape and then they dropped out of a heart attack because of this adrenaline situation. It also explains the higher risk of getting heart attacks from a severe shock to the system of a stress, loss of a loved one, loss of a friend, loss of money, loss of job, loneliness, divorce, illness, injury, being in a situation where you're constantly fighting with someone or you're being affected by them or you have a you know, chronic anxiety, anger or depression, or just being in a fear state can all raise your level of adrenaline to the point where you're feeding way too much sugar to the body and especially the heart muscle and you're generating a lot of lactate, which is turning into lactic acid, creating a bad situation for the heart muscle. In fact, very specifically, when you have too much lactic acid in the heart muscle, um, you start to develop uh, arrhythmias uh, like atrial fib that doesn't always necessarily just come from an electrolyte imbalance. It can come from this hypoxia because there's damage going on into the heart muscle. High blood pressure is another effect of this as well. Hardening of the arteries is another effect of this. And eventually necrosis, which is like your heart muscles start breaking down and dying because you don't have enough oxygen. For arrhythmias, especially atrial fib, after heart attack, uh, one of the medications they use is digitalis. And digitalis does increase more blood flow, but it also is a potent inhibitor of this lactic acid, which is very interesting and is probably the reason why it actually does keep people alive. The other interesting thing about adrenaline is that when you're under chronic stress, it's going to raise especially your LDL cholesterol, which is the small dense particle size LDL, as well as increasing your triglycerides. Now, normally those two would be increased when you're eating sugar. You wouldn't think they'd be elevated with stress or adrenaline, but yes, adrenaline does do that. So the real problem with a lot of people is they're under this sympathetic nervous system dominance. They don't have enough of the opposing um, parasympathetic, which is the calming, which is responsible for rest and digestion, right? The sympathetic uh, nervous system is all about fight or flight mode. Fight meaning more like the emotion of anger or flight meaning the emotion of fear where you're running away from something. I'm bringing up this point because I want you to be very aware of, I think, a very common root cause of heart problems that you can do something about, okay, once you identify this mechanism. Now, there are other things that also increase lactate directly that then will increase lactic acid and a hypoxia that you should be aware of. And one is smoking and vaping. When people vape, if you ever look at the ingredients, one of the ingredients is propylene glycol. That's antifreeze, okay? Propylene glycol increases lactate, especially when it's heated in a vapor state. And I think they use it for the flavoring, but um, I'm not sure exactly why they use it. But if you vape, I would make sure that it doesn't have that ingredient. But the other problem with vaping is that it has nicotine, which also increases adrenaline, and it can cause this whole chain reaction just from that. Uh, same thing with smoking. I mean, when you think about smoking, there's no fat or cholesterol in smoking in a cigarette, is there? No, there's not. Then why is it that uh, smokers have elevated cholesterol and triglycerides? Because smoking increases adrenaline, which then increases glucose, which then increases cholesterol and triglycerides. Smoking actually does not relieve stress. It causes more stress and increasing your chance for heart attacks because of this hypoxia. Smoking in general will increase your chance of a heart attack by five times. Vaping will increase your chance of getting a heart attack by two times. Now, another thing that can create this hypoxia is Tylenol um, poisoning. Another one would be inflammation. Another would be diabetes. And we've already talked about sugar. The number one type of sugar that will cause um, high levels of lactic acid and lactic acidosis and this hypoxia is fructose. You know, that stuff that we drink in sodas and these fruit juices that we shouldn't be drinking. It's the fructose. Another thing that can cause hypoxia is cyanide poisoning. Uh, alcohol is another one that can increase lactic acidosis. 
and hypoxia. And the medication metformin, it has a black label, which means that it has a very severe side effect called lactic acidosis. And so metformin can cause this state as well. And this is why the next thing I'm going to say makes a lot of sense. Uh, a B1 deficiency and a B12 deficiency can increase lactate, lactic acidosis, and hypoxia. And that's one of the things that metformin does is it creates a B1 and B12 deficiency. Anything that creates a B1, B12 deficiency, like sugar, stress, and just a lot of carbohydrates can create this hypoxia. This is probably why when people are under stress and they take uh, B1 uh, or sometimes B12, they just, they can breathe better. They have more oxygen. They feel less stressed. So here's what I recommend you do. Number one, you have to reduce the triggers of your stress, no matter, you know, whatever you can do for that, especially if it's chronic, okay? But then number two, you have to do things to kind of flush out the stress on a daily basis. And this would be long walks, walking in nature on a regular basis. It flushes out adrenaline. It flushes out cortisol. Um, with also intermittent, higher intense exercise with lots of rest. Number three, avoiding sugar, okay? Well, now you know why, because you don't want that to turn into um, lactic acid and hypoxia. That's called the ketogenic diet. Uh, and taking uh, B1 on a regular basis can greatly help um, keep lactic acid at bay. And since we're on the topic of the heart muscle, one of the most important nutrients to increase the level of oxygen in the heart muscle itself is called tocotrienols. It's a type of vitamin E that I recommend. So now that you're aware of the stress factor, adrenaline, let's talk about um, the calcium buildup in the arteries. That's a, a little bit different topic, but related. I put that up right here. 